out to sea is indescribable, but we'll do our best. Take people with loads of heart, a ton of creativity, and a chance for superstardom. Put them all at Rockford Speedway, and you have the trailer figure eight race next on Speed. Hello, everyone. Kent Stout with you, and we're about to kick off the third season of Lucas Oil on the Edge. This is where it all got started. Rockford Speedway, the figure eight trailer race. If you want crazy, we got crazy. Mayhem, carnage, it's all going to happen here tonight. I promise you, you will see Rex. And these, these are our people, baby. It's the blue car in mid-America, the heartland that loves Lucas Oil on the edge and has made this show so popular. We're going to about to get things started right here. But before we do that, let's sit it down to my colleague, Ted Brunson, our resident crazy man. Ken, you're right, I've got to be a little crazy to be standing right here in the crosshairs at Rockford Speedway of the renowned, the famous, the worldwide known figure eight trailer race. Now, as everybody knows, the normal object of a figure eight race is to avoid being hit and avoid hitting the other people. That's not the case here. Object here, very simple. No rules, go through the figure eight as fast as you can and destroy every trailer in sight. Now, we don't have a repeat winner coming back, that's for sure. Jim Slepsevich is not here to go for the hat trick, but you've got crazy guys. You've got Chris Caterpillar Miller, you've got Rich Schinderling, you've got a whole slew of nut jobs ready to go nuts. Let me get the heck out of here and let's get it on. I'd also like to welcome to the booth Scott Douglas with me. We're going to have a ton of fun here tonight, my brother. Figure eight trailer race. Take a look at some of the big names that are inside of this. By the way, every single one of them with their own nickname. Yeah, we're not going with beat names. We're going to them by their nicknames like Sydney and Dub and Hollywood as they get ready for the green flag. And the green flag will fly out here, and whenever it flies, everybody needs to be out of the way because there will be immediate shrapnel everywhere. The green flag flies. You can see the flag when they're running for dear life. These guys are so creative though and take a look at the design for Dean Black Barker that thing they spent a lot of time on that trailer and it's not going to last very long the whole point is to knock the smithereens out of anything that anybody else is dragging we're on board with Caterpillar Miller and you're going to see what it's like to cut the X that guy always comes out here and always does a great job look at the size of this trailer about to get hit Man, man. something that big on behind your figure eight car or truck, you're asking for it to get hit. That's like a big billboard rolling down the road, and it is gone already. And, of course, he's still in competition, though, because he does have that trailer attached to the back of the vehicle. Here's what it looked like momentarily. Ted wasn't in there, was he? Well, no promises here. Ted hangs out he was, anywhere. He yeah. was trying to hide somewhere. I was, <laughs> wasn't sure where. And the race continues. That's just going to be part of the obstacles now. Now, as we take a look at Brett Deutsch, and Deutsch has a smaller trailer in the back of it. There's actually a lot of technology and a lot of learning these guys will do to try and keep that trailer behind them. But hey, dude, is that your boat? It, it is, and I, I need to get down there and get it back. This is insane. You know, one of the things about this in oh, figure eight right racing, into it. I, I can't keep up with the action. In figure eight racing, normally you're trying to set up to avoid the contact in the intersection. Here you go through the X figure, and how am I going to hit this guy next time? That's Picklehead Perillo. They're calling him King Kong here. We know him as Picklehead. That is Rich Schinderling, by the way. And Schinderling is an absolute madman out here. He partakes in all the crazy events that go on at Rockford and actually wins a ton of them. The guy is crazy. Hey, when we come back, we'll continue on here with our figure eight trailer race. Stick with us. You're watching On The Hag. Welcome back to Lucas Oil on the Edge. We're at Rockford Speedway for the figure eight trailer race. Earlier today, Ted had a chance to talk with one of the husband and wife teams. Well, you don't want to be here when the race starts. That's obvious, and these two told me that, so thank you very much. And these two, who are they? Well, they're a couple. When I say couple, married three years, Ed and Amy Witt. Is it a bit strange? Maybe. A little curious? I think so. Let's talk to Amy first. And Amy... You've been married three years. You seem to have a good relationship. And is the good relationship because you get to knock the heck out of him on the track? It helps. Definitely helps. What do you think when you're going through the crosshairs? Are you mad at him because he left the toilet seat up or he drinks out of the milk carton? Or what's the deal? What are you thinking when you're about to knock the trailer off? All I think about is flooring it. I think of all, all the other things, the toilet seat, the milk <laughs> carton. The list could go on and on. It could go on and on. Now, let's get a man's perspective of it here. 
All right, big guy. Yep. Tell me the truth. Are you really the workhorse? And, and why are you doing this? Don't you love your wife? What's the problem? Do we need to have an intervention? Uh, I'm the workhorse. I'll agree with you there. I love my wife, but when we go on the track, she's not my wife anymore. It's just every man for themselves. That's the way it is. So, so for 20 minutes, a couple of times a year, when you're in this trailer race, you yep. forget that you're married. I don't know. It's a little strange to me. It's fun. Good couple. I have to say that because he's a lot bigger than I am. <laughs> He is gigantic. That is a large man, no question. As we go on board here with Caterpillar Miller, and it looks like he might be hung up there behind King Kong Gorilla, which, by the way, opposed to his girlfriend. King Kong is, is just the king of romance. I mean, he's supposed to come quite into the trailer race, but he lost his original trailer piece, so he decided to pick up the Caterpillar and take it for a ride. Apparently so. I don't know what it had to do with the steering of that van, but he ran her right into the wall, and now Caterpillar Miller he just can't seem to get unhooked. Well, he's trying to shake him off there. It's just not working. That makes ground full of those competitors here in the world-famous victory trailer race, the legendary Rockford Speedway. And that's why people have been coming to this track for so many years, going back to the legendary promoter, Hugh Deary, who started this track and started it with a fence just like this. And look at the shrapnel out there. Look at the carnage and all the items out there. And Black Barker still got his man standing somehow, but looks like he's about to take it. It's gone. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> he survived somehow. It's such a big target. See, he should come into the trailer race. I think kind of trying to be a little, you know, inconspicuous. Get a, a small, you know, something on your trailer because you notice the big stuff doesn't last very Not long. Not these guys, man. They want you to see what they brought. Everybody's so creative. I'm glad I'm not part of the cleanup crew here. I was this is the last this. event of the night because nothing could run after this one. I didn't want to go down there with a broom. I was just thinking that. But, you know, Ted's down there looking for something to do, so we may have something for him to do after the race. Yeah, and I'm sure you're just hand him a broom. He can sweep for a few hours. One more time, it looks like Dean Parker's man is hanging on. He did lose an arm, though. He's lost a limb. Is that Zorro <laughs> or a pirate? What is this supposed to be about the back here? It's a pirate, okay. of course. All right. Scott. Well, I mean, oh, look out. He's a dead pirate now. <laughs> He's a headless pirate. Wow. One more look here at Black Parker's trailer and what happened to the man standing up there. Actually survived a number of laps. Here we go. Another vantage point. Boom. Just like that. No, no respect. Ken, if I didn't know better, I thought he did that on purpose. It sure looked like it, didn't it? Wow. This is insane. And that's what you come to expect with Andy. Look at him coming down the chute. How can you even figure out he's going to make the next lap? Once again, you can see a couple of them hooked up here, and they'll drive up on top of those trailers and try and get them knocked off. Any little thing behind the vehicle still constitutes a trailer. Here we'll have another look. It's like a trailer on a trailer. Got to give Caterpillar credit. What a great move. Just a little right-hand turn totally shreds the trailer. He thought he knocked the whole deal off, but he just got the second part of it off. Awesome stuff. Hey, let's send it down to Ted with more on Caterpillar Miller. Well, there you see the yellow truck of Chris Caterpillar Miller. Last year, he had a big problem because he got caught on one of the big barrier tires. This year, he's caught up on a pop-up trailer. He's always one of the favorites. He's always a crowd pleaser. But the question is, can he get the heck out of there? It ain't looking good, my man. When we come back, we'll continue the madness. Anyone who follows the trailer racers here on Lucas Oil on the Edge knows that most of these guys are pretty touched in the head. You're looking at the trailer of Dean Barker, the pirate. Arr. Now, you haven't done this in about four years. You had some friends surprise you with the pirate theme. About just a couple of hours ago, they put this whole theme together, and you know it's just going to be destroyed in about 10 seconds. Yeah, it's, I think it's a reasonable thing. Work on something, you know, for hours and destroy it in about, well, hopefully about 15 minutes. But but I got to tell you, you've got pretty much the most rad vehicle out here. You've got two engines, two front suspensions on a 1988 Dodge Caravan with 288,000 miles on it. Dude, what's the deal? That's a lot of work to put into a trailer race. Well, it tell you what, it's been around six years. We've uh, run four trailer races with it. It still runs. I won the last trailer race about four years ago with it and it's still running tonight. Now, why? Why, after four years, do you come back? You're on hiatus. You're probably just living a normal life, mowing the lawn on a Saturday. Now you find yourself putting together this thing. Uh, it's really my friend's fault. They kept, you know, egging me on, and so I, you know, they tried to get me to do it last year, and then I gave in to them this year. If you're looking for a favorite, this guy won four years ago, and he's got that backup engine. Um, we don't know exactly what's going on in the rest of his mind, but he's definitely going to have some power behind him. Dean Barker, crazy guy. 
hours to make the trailer. It had to be days, weeks to make that vehicle. Two engines, sauce. Awesome. And the, the amazing thing is there's been so much buzz about Black Barker coming out of retirement. I mean, it's like it's like Tyson coming back out of retirement, huh? Oh, it was a big deal, no doubt about it. Press releases everywhere, and now it looks like he's towing around a plumbing truck. Round and round Maybe we the plumbing go. truck is pushing him around. I look at the, look at the drill on the hood of the truck. That's awesome. So I'm guessing he's drilling him right now. <laughs> That's great stuff. You know, you've got to take a little bit of seriousness if you want to win this thing, though, and protect the front end. That's the other thing. You've noticed the best hits have been made use of the fenders. You can't give your radiator up to try and win this thing. And the race definitely on. You can see the 43 right there buzzing around pretty much unstable. That's, that's my so man far. Cheeseburger in Paradise right there. You like Cheeseburger? Yeah. Yeah, Parker's he's on done. it. We've got another passenger along for the ride. Yeah, Black Barker's still hanging on, man. That plumbing truck all over the trailer. And he can't get him off. He might have done it right there. Looked like he shook him loose for just a moment. Apparently not. It looks like he's finally stuck. Barker. Barker was a few inches inside of that thing. You know, he's landed right in our camera lens there. He's kind of messing up the shot. we got to <laughs> have to make an adjustment here. And the race goes on is the amazing thing. You know, forget the yellow flag. Throw it out of the way. Ted Bronson, of course, we always have a great update from him. Let's send it down. He's standing track side. Why? Because he's fearless. I'll tell you what, Ken, the pirate Dean Barker is taking a plumbing truck for a ride. Those two are going oh! around. Look at what's happened here, man. They flipped completely over in the intersection. Did we really get Ted out of the way that quickly? <laughs> I think Ted hurt everybody else too. We did. I mean, <laughs> That's the quickest Ted has moved since I've been here. Let's have another look at it right here. A big collision trying to take that trailer out. He did knock the trailer off, but rolled the truck completely over. Ed Witt, we talked to him earlier. That's the big man. We saw him with his wife, Amy. And man, oh man, does he go for a ride. You know, they do have a rollover contest out here. I was but wondering. He's, he's <laughs> eating the wrong competition. I think his wife's cracking up laughing at him over here. Unfortunately, he did lose his trailer just to add insult to injury, but he's A-OK. -okay. More in a moment. You're watching Lucas Oil on the edge. We're at Rockford Speedway, and this is the figure eight trailer race. One of Forrest Lucas's favorites. Let's send it down to Ted. All right, and what was perhaps the most thrilling moment in the past few trailer races, Ed Witt. Yeah! Ed Witt pleasing the crowd. His wife's checking to make sure you're okay. Ed, dude, you want to talk about a crowd pleaser. You're insane. Are you okay? Yeah, that was awesome. That was an awesome ride. Your wife the truck last year and got hurt. This one's all good. But that's good live to good use, man. Green flag back out. That's Brett City Deutsch coming through the X. Man, and that thing looks pretty doggone good right there. Looks like it's been unhit. Yeah, now that we're exhausting so much of this harness, we're going to have to start figuring out who's going to win this thing. And there is the big city right there. We go on board with him. A little bitty trailer back there. That's the perfect scenario. Yeah, if you want to win it, you know, if you're going for the show, put the big trailer on the back. If you want to win it, do something smart with what you're carrying on the trailer. And if you see, you can do that X without having too much to drag behind you. And some of these guys are just on the gas. He's trying to take that trailer out, trying to time it perfectly to knock that thing off the back of the van there. Number eight, that was King Kong Gorilla. Some of these guys are used to normal figure eight racing where you try to time it to miss the other guy. Just it's a change of the way you're gonna look at it. You gotta time it to hit the next lap through. Wild ride through there as you saw. It looked like the 64 Cliff Noble. We call him the cool man. Came flying through there. There is car number 70 as well. That's Leaping Larry Rapogo. And it, it's crazy in the intersection. And now, so much smoke coming up, we're going to have to really work to identify who's still got a trailer on the back. And look at the speed. I mean, some of these guys are really oh, yeah. starting to, to move along pretty quickly. Once again, there's the tool man, the tool man in the 64 truck, and there is the big city Deutsch. He's taking that high line, takes it right up to the wall, may scrape a little wall with it, but, you know, in this case, anything goes in the trailer figure eight race. A Rockford Speedway racing stripe is historic, and there he is once again, look at truck number 64. How do you, you steer little, one like that, dude? No <laughs> end problem there, I believe. <laughs> Hey, he's Whoa. hanging in there, though. You just got to love everything about him, man. These guys are determined. Well, he's a tool, man. You got to be able to take that toe in and knock it back the other way. Get down to our final few here, Ken. We are. There's only a couple left, and I've got to think the tool man is just about done since he really can't steer it all, and another one's gone over. That is 
Al Bekalewski, and he goes for a big right. Let's see what happens here, Scott. AJ gets it up, and yeah, just going on the side. That's two rollovers in one trailer race. Amazing. On the driver's side as well. Let's check in with Ted. See if he's okay. All right, standing with Al Bekalewski, who was rollover number two for the evening. You're all pumped up, man. That oh, did, man. That, all that did was just jack you up, didn't it? Oh, man. I'm, I'm through the roof, man. That thing, I almost, I hit on two wheels earlier, and then. I hit that guy and it just went over, man. It's done. <laughs> Dude, this is such a rush right now for you, isn't it? Oh man, I race here all the time, but this is like the best. I mean, you can't beat this coming out here and doing it. These guys absolutely love coming out here and having fun, and we're glad they do. Thanks a lot, Ted. We'll continue on here. We are getting down to the final moments of this race. We're down to about three vehicles, it looks like. And who's going to be able to hang on and survive? Scott, they got to pull out all the stops now. Actually, it's in the race strategy now, Ken. We've got the three remaining vehicles all together coming through the X. And the guy with the edge is Brett City Deutsch in that number 24 because he can take the side angle and knock these trailers out of there. I thought he was going to make a sandwich there for just a moment, but he blows right on by. Did not get the trailer knocked off. Now he gets hit back. A little retaliation. Deutsch will take it around, and we're pretty much going to get this thing down to the final two because he is trying to make the move up on the eighth, and he's going to, again, have the advantage by being behind him, beside him. He can use all those short track moves. A little bump and run, a little shot to the side. It's all coming into play now. And you can see that the strategy now is to try and drive up on that trailer and see if he can get it ripped off of the vehicle because they are not on opposite ends of the track, so we're not going to have any action in the intersection. It's all about driving up on top of that trailer and trying to mash it down onto the ground. And big City Deutsch struggling there just a little bit. But take a look at this guy, man. He's hanging on pretty good. Well, I thought King Kong, and I, I mean, you can get a ruling. Is that a real trailer? I think he's just got a bar hanging off the back. As long as there's something dragging off the back of the vehicle, it is considered a trailer, so he is absolutely legal to this point. Deutsch has decided he's going to give him the bump and run to try and get King Kong Perello out of his way and onto the victory. And Big City looks like he knows how to do that job. He's up on him again. Let's watch him as they come through. It's in the turn. He wants to give him the shot and see if he can take him out. Oh, Here perfect. it comes. Perfect. That's what he wants to do right there. Got oh, it. and he runs him completely off the track. He takes all the weight off the front end. Look at him trying to stop. He can't stop, and he pushes him completely off the track. In fact, the crew running for their lives, and I think Ted is standing right down there. <laughs> One more look at it, and you can see Brett City Deutsch showing him how it's done. If this late is a trailer race. You get behind a man, you can take him out any way you can. Flying old glory proudly. He's having a good run, man. Maybe that's a good luck charm. Brett City Deutsch, we're going to go on board with him. Look at the battlefield he has to drive through right now. Uh, yeah, just driving through here without getting a flat tire is amazing in its own right. Just, have the, uh, just speaking of that. <laughs> How about that for being a prophet? You called that one. He's now blown one on the front, but he's still rolling, and that's the key. I think we're going to have a winner here. I don't see anybody else out on the track, and there's a checkered flag. So congratulations, Brett, the city, Deutsch, doing an excellent job. That man made it through, and he carried old glory proudly throughout the entire event. Got the trailer so <laughs> hanging on the back of it. He's still, he's still racing, man. <laughs> Excellent stuff. He takes his victory lap as well. And you know, if you got to carry a Kyria flag during a victory lap, no better flag than that. No, absolutely. And a couple of other vehicles look like they wanted to come back on, but this baby's over. Rancho Amigo at Brett City Deutsch, and he pulls off the victory, even though he was down on the tires. And you mentioned it, Ken. I'm surprised he still has three of them. But virtually anybody running, as you can tell, is going to have a flat tire in this mess. Yeah, you can see just no trailer left behind that truck. So he's pretty much out of contention, even though the vehicle is still running. So he'll pull it around here right in front of the crowd. Everybody's standing on their feet. They absolutely love this event. Here comes Ted. We see Ted running over there. He's looking around and making sure nobody else is going to run over him. We'll send it down there to Ted, who's standing with our winner. Ted? I'll tell you one thing. I think we've got a new kamikaze, at least for this year. Brett Deutsch, you're an absolute <laughs> madman, dude. Thank you. <laughs> tell me about it. You were just out there going crazy in I this van. I to hit anybody that was moving. We had Look at that. So, in one piece. Now, get over here now. Wait a minute. You, you still got some trailer left on you. Oh, yeah. And you just went after everybody. We had two rollovers. I think it caused one of them. <laughs> That's all I'm out here for is a good time. 
<laughs> ah, right there! I think that says it all. Congrats, bro. Thank you very much. And Scott, that's the enthusiasm these guys bring. The exhilaration, the thrill of the victory in the trailer race. He just won the biggest event of his life right there. For Ned Brunson, and Scott Douglas, I'm Tim Stout. Remember, you're not living unless you're on the edge.